And now it's time for my friend and most of yours, big round of applause for Vicky Steele! That's a lot of applause and you haven't heard one damn thing yet. <laughs> Man, it's great being here and I'm just honored to have a chance to go last and I guess because I was valet parking, they, <laughs> they allowed me to have that opportunity and I certainly appreciate it. I see all my bosses and uh, some board members and all my friends and all my family from Definition 6 here. I appreciate your applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> But again, why are you doing it before I start? <laughs> Tomorrow morning when I get to work, are you going to applaud when I pull in the driveway? <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. Gracious alive. Anyway, I'm very glad to be here again after a year and a half absence, and I very much appreciate all of you coming. Now, I tell you, I don't know a hell of a lot, but there's one thing I do know. It ain't easy being me. <laughs> it's never been easy being me. I recall it was just as a baby, I heard a story. The doctor delivered me, came in looking for my dad, found him and he said, Mr. Steele, we're sorry. We did all we could do. But it survived. <laughs> it's never been easy being me. Especially when I started driving. Boy, I turned a teenager and started driving and got my driver's license on Friday the 13th. The most unlucky day for the automobile insurance industry in the history of America. Turned 16 on a Friday, got my first ticket. Sunday night. Leaving church. I always thought that minister was pretty good at preaching and praying. He was damn good at cussing, too. I got my next ticket two weeks later. Again, leaving church. You see, this time I had 13 people in and on the back of my 65 Mustang convertible. <laughs> Two of the knuckleheads are in the back, Robert Waters and Scott Jones. <laughs> they live to tell about it, but they're back there drinking, <laughs> drugging. Have fun, guys. Anyway, the police officer stopped me for that little incident didn't really know what citation to use. So he called the dispatcher and said, Sergeant, what do you call 13 people in a two-door convertible? I heard the radio crackle said, I believe I'm going to call that a record. <laughs> I've been setting records with my driving ever since then. And of course, many of you who are laughing have ridden with me, and I understand your need to drink. Keep it up. Anyway, moving to Atlanta hasn't made it any easier being me, especially driving. Aren't Atlanta drivers the worst? Yeah. Good gosh. Don't you hate those SOBs who drive 90 miles an hour, talking on their cell phone, cutting from lane to lane without even thinking about using a blinker? Aren't they the worst? Yeah. I knew you felt that way. I saw the expression on your faces when I passed you on 285. <laughs> How about the next time y'all wave, use all those fingers? <laughs> and man, getting old ain't easy being me either. Good gosh. My dear friend and barber for the last 20 years, Randy Durden, his beautiful wife Marissa are here tonight. Everybody I know is here tonight, by the way. <laughs> if there's anybody I don't know, they're not here tonight. Anyway, 20 years ago, I used to go to Randy and say, Randy, how about taking a lot off the back and a little around the ears? Today, Randy, take a little off the back and a lot out of my ears. It's a damn forest in there. Randy told me he thought he saw Bambi and Thumper. Randy did tell me, though, I have no worry about ever going bald. He said, Ricky, if you ever start losing any hair, I can comb your unibrow straight back. You know, kind of that Eddie Munster look. <laughs> anyway, getting old just ain't easy being me either. Good gosh almighty. 
I'm telling you, you know, weight and getting old is just tough. It's affected everything, including my sleep. You know, now I have to wear a mask when I go to sleep at night. It's a lovely little contraption. <laughs> kind of looks like something Lloyd Bridges wore in Sea Hunt. <laughs> Y'all think this is funny? <laughs> Last week I tried to harpoon my wife. <laughs> On our waterbed. It's dangerous. Dangerous out there. Good gosh almighty. Thanks, sweetheart. Glad you came. <laughs> Not recently, but... Boy, tough crowd. They'll turn on you in a hurry, won't they? Turn on you in a hurry. Good gosh. Anyway, this whole getting old thing is you know, kind of rough on the sex life as well. It ain't easy being me there either. Sex for me is now an idea. Not a destination. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for pickpockets, I'd have no sex life at all. <laughs> the kindest thing my wife will say to me before we make love is, you mind covering me up when you finish? <laughs> oh, I'll catch hell tonight. I'm sure all of y'all have read the story recently about the, you know, country club madams operating out of the um, um, Sugarloaf Country Club up in North Atlanta. Show of hands, how many guys have been there? I thought I recognized you. Good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Anyway, my wife and I watched the show one night on television, and the announcer said that these women were getting $10,000 a night for sex. Wow. My wife looked at me and she says, you know, maybe I could do that and you could retire. I said, sweetheart, I appreciate that, but I just don't see how we can live on 20000 a year. <laughs> oh, I'll double hell tonight. Catholics in the audience tonight? Great, right, I've got a little religious question, kind of about this Lent thing. You see, earlier this year, my wife said that she was going to give up sex for Lent. I said, you know, darling, although we're not Catholic, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to give up something you enjoy. <laughs> my question is this, does Lent ever end... Anyway, I want to close tonight, and I'm sure all of you are ready to get home, but it's been a, a lot of fun. But I want to close tonight. I have a little advice for you guys in the audience. Hopefully it can be of some help to you. A couple of weeks ago, Beth got into bed a little earlier than I did, and, um, you know, I came upstairs, and I had a beautiful silver tray with a glass of water and a couple of aspirin. And I got by the side of the bed, and she looked at me, and she said, what in the world is that for? I said, sweetheart, it's for your headache. She said, I don't have a headache. I said, Lent is over tonight. <laughs> I hope you've had a great night tonight. Take care of the waitresses and waitresses. And I know one thing for sure as I close. You all know for sure it ain't easy being me. And you have no business, business even wanting to try. More importantly, you know, it ain't easy being my darling wife, Beth, for having to put up with this for so many years. If anyone deserves a standing ova ovation, it is you, love of my life, Beth. Thank you and good night. God bless.